turn you over to our freedom. <laughs> our minister that is always talking about freedom, Reverend Dr. Sonia Davidson. Good morning, everyone. I add my words of welcome to you to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living and not to forget to those on the World Wide Web. It is my great honor to share the podium this morning with my beloved Reverend Anne Shand. And I just look forward to her blessing you when we have the birthday blessing, right? So get ready. Happy Emancipence, shall we say? Happy Emancipence to you all. Tell me back now. OK, uh, OK. OK, thank you. <laughs> My talk this morning centers, yes, around freedom. Getting me over there? I begin with a quote from one Charles Simons, and it was written, it was in a 1965 essay on freedom and published by the World Ministry of Prayer, Science of Mind Foundation. And it just struck me very much because I was thinking along those lines. It said, the seed of freedom is planted in the innermost being of all people. Freedom is not born in a nation. Freedom is born in people. Freedom is born in people. In the Bible, Genesis also encourages us to think along those lines. Genesis first two, chapter, first Genesis chapter two, verse 28 speaks. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created him. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase. Fill the world, the earth and subdue it. It wasn't just talking about having many children. Some people take that literally. Be fruitful and increase. Allow the creative power to manifest through you. Ernest Holmes adds his own thoughts. The divine plan, he says, is one of freedom. The inherent nature of man is ever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom, because freedom is the birthright of every living soul. Convinced? You got it from three different channels, two different channels. Now, man, many wars have been fought in the name of freedom. Leaders and armies have attempted to extricate themselves from the control of tyrannous forces. Nations have invaded other countries, and they continue to do so under the guise of liberating the inhabitants downtrodden, so to speak, groups of persons either stand up to those who would deny them their freedom or flee domination in droves. But no matter how many wars, how many revolutions, how many mass migrations, how many flights from danger are made, like the prodigal son, each of us must make the discovery which leads to freedom for oneself. In the words of the right, honorable Marcus Garvey, national hero and new thought apostle. These words which are immortalized in a song by Robert Nesta, Ma Nesta Marley. You know what? Emancipate yourself from mental slavery 
None but ourselves can free our minds. Yes, for the emancipation of our bodies, various interventions have been um, found to be necessary at different stages in liberation. But true freedom begins in the, and ends in the minds of individuals. A nation that is free is made up of the individuals who have to a greater extent liberated their own thinking. It is the collective consciousness which reaches a critical point which says to, pe to a, a country or a group of persons, we are ready for greater freedom. For thousands of years, the dominant collective thinking of humanity was that everyone was under the control of outside forces, including the many gods, cosmic malevolent forces, and numerous planetary movements. The one god of monotheism was an upgrade, loving and protective, but a controlling and sometimes punitive presence in the eyes of most cultures. This god had laid down a set of rules for humanity, we were told, and made it clear that the consequences for breaking them would be punishment. Little was it known that we are not punished for our mistakes, but by them. Time passes. Many mystics and visionaries have brought to each generation the message of freedom. Over time, many have come to accept that there is more to each of us than meets the eye. There is definitely more to us than we are at this moment experiencing or expressing. Gradually, cultures and nations awaken to the truth about freedom. Charles Simon, who I quoted at the beginning, says, a nation is a summation of the individual parts. Our thoughts make up our individual experiences as well as the collective experiences of a nation. As we are thinking individually, we are contributing to the collective so that we will see the nation that we wish to live in. As each member of a group becomes aware, that person not only benefits themselves, him or herself, but contributes to the awakening of the entire group. If I be lifted up, I will lift all others unto me. Despite appearances, I am convinced that humanity is indeed awakening to its spiritual magnificence, awakening to know that God's spirit indwells every person that the gifts of the Spirit are available to all alike, and that we access the gifts by our own beliefs and acceptance of them. Yes, there is something in us that knows that this is so, and it will not let us forget it. It urges us to exercise that freedom for individual and collective benefit. Some call it the divine urge. This divine urge makes us long for more. It does not tell us what that more is, but like the prodigal son, it sets us out to search for it, of it. We cannot avoid the journey towards self-discovery. It is the path that continues to freedom. We have all felt the divine urge, I am sure, although we may misinterpret the message at times or even choose to ignore it, at least for a while. The divine urge within us is God's way of letting us know that we should push forward and make that which is awaiting um, and take that which is awaiting or demand. That's the science of mind, page 157. It's a page worth reading. There's also an opportunity to step, stop and ask ourselves the question, 
how am I using my God-given freedom? Is this the way I really want to? Or is it the best that I think I can express it? Within each of us is the essence of all that we could ever be. We are as complete in our potential of magnificence as a seed is complete in its potential to be a tree. Thomas Troward says, we carry within us the wonders we seek without. The creator which made us in its image and likeness, the father which stands ready to express to us, is always at home to us and within us. We are already living in the father's household and ear to the life we seek. Ralph Walder Emerson, yes, remember, though we travel the world over to find the beautiful, we must carry it with us, or we find it not. We must carry it with us, or we find it not. The beauty to which Emerson refers is born of the awareness of the presence of God within. It is from that awareness that we find the confidence to act on our cherished dreams. Ernest Holmes encourages us, begin to act from your dominion. Begin by telling yourself there is nothing to be afraid of, that you no longer entertain images of fear. He further says, encouraging us to step out, a ship in a harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. I think that is so cute. Get going. At any moment of our choosing, we can begin anew the journey to liberate ourselves from confining or restrictive experiences, habits, thought patterns, or life status. We can choose to redirect our lives by redirecting our thinking. I came upon a story recently which highlights this. The world's most famous set of awards, I'm told, is the Nobel Prize. It's presented for achievement in literature, medicine, peace, economics, and sciences. They were created a century ago by Alfred Nobel, a man who amassed his fortunes at selling explosives. Mr. Noble appeared to have been quite satisfied with his notoriety, earned primarily as the, as the inventor, the promoter of dynamite, until he was confronted with a limiting word picture of himself. On hearing of the death of a Mr. Noble, a newspaper mistakenly thought that Alfred had died, when in fact it was Alfred's brother who had died. So it posted an obituary which celebrated Mr. Alfred Noble as a person who had made it possible to kill more people more quickly than anyone who had ever lived. Not surprisingly, that was not how Mr. Noble had wished to be remembered. He therefore set about creating a plan to break free from that image of himself and that is how the Nobel Prize is, were born. Mr. Nobel made a dramatic about turn in consciousness. He had to, as he chose to think, build, instead of destroy. It is not an under, overstatement to say that no two persons have the same idea of how to use their freedom of choice. To be or not to be, that is a question said Shakespeare's Hamlet. I'm taking it a little bit out of context. Freedom begins and ends in the mind. The key that opens the door to freedom is choice. We choose our thinking and choose our lives to, in the opinion of Dr. Holmes, the greatest discovery that a man has ever made, that man has ever made, is that he could think, yes, and use that thinking to choose. American investment, but I'm sure you have heard this story before, but every time I hear it, I just love it some more. An American investment banker was at the pier for a small 
Mexican village when a small boat with a fisherman docked. Inside the small boat was several large finned tuna. The American complimented the Mexican on the quality of his fish and asked how long it took him to catch them. The Mexican replied, oh, only a little while. The American then asked, why didn't you, you stay out longer and catch more fish? The Mexican said he had enough to support his family's immediate needs. The American then said, but what do you do with the rest of your time? The Mexican fisherman said, I sleep late, fish a little, play with my children, take siesta with my wife, Maria, stroll into the village each evening where I sip wine, play guitar with my amigos. I have a full and busy life. The American scoffed, I am a Harvard MBA and, would, and could help you. You should spend more time fishing and with the proceeds, buy a bigger boat. With the proceeds from the bigger boat, you could buy several boats. Eventually, you could have a fleet of fishing boats. Instead of selling your catch to middlemen, you could sell it directly to the processor, eventually opening your own cannery. You could control the product, processing and distributing. You, could, you would indeed leave this small coastal fishing village and move to Mexico City, then LA, and eventually New York City, where you will run your expanding enterprise. The Mexican fisherman asked, but how what long will this take? 15 to 20 years, the American replied. The American said, then you could retire, move to a small coastal village where you could sleep late, <laughs> fish a little, play with your kids, take siesta with your wife, stroll in the village in the evening where you could sip wine and play your guitar with your amigos. You see why I love it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my. Both men had chosen how they wanted to be. They were each exercising their freedom to choose how to get there. Freedom requires discipline and control over your own self, not others. Freedom is an individual choice and responsibility. We have the way and the power to control our lives and not others. Tom Johnson, Lessons from the Source, said, Choose the way you want to feel. Misery doesn't just happen. He says, happiness doesn't just happen either. It is our divine right or a gift from God to choose. We choose now that it is good to choose and know that it is good and very good. And when we are ready for a new experience, we merely choose again with equal confidence. Yes. Without doubt, the ability to choose our thoughts, opinions, may be exercised anytime, any place, and to achieve any purpose. It is the most liberating feeling to know this. There are at least a few provisors, though. We must first choose in a way that does no harm to anyone. In choosing, feel ourselves filled with love and light, and use in our use our intention should be focused, not what we wish to move away from, what what we move, wish to move towards. We must be single-minded and unyielding in our anticipation of the outcome of our intention, but indifferent to the means by which that intention will arrive in our lives. Again, I'm quoting Thomas Jarre this morning. He said, God does not need your help. He says, we often act as if we thought God needed our health, help. So we give all kinds of advice. We try to determine how our good must come to us. And so we outline in great detail what the good looks like and exactly how it should arrive in our life. My father-in-law, I remember him for this, a devout Christian. He said, once you give God something to do, let him do it now, or he'll say, do it yourself, right? <laughs> we need to, ins we, we, no need to instruct the law of God how to. There's a power within us that answers our every need, our every challenge. When we contemplate the limitlessness of the power of God, the mind and the law, which is God, com um, comes into action. And it, when we contemplate this, it is easier to let go and let God. Now, 
you know, a football match is a, a game is lost on the choices that players make. The passing choices, defense move, the attempts at shooting at a goal are all parts of the game, but each player is free within the limits of the rules of the game. Every moment of our lives is filled with opportunities to choose. Most of the choices we make are done spontaneously. We're always choosing without much deliberate assessment of the options available to us. It is easy to choose when alternatives are very dissimilar. It is when we are faced with options which seem to us to have equal consequences that we hesitate. What shall I do? Which one should it be? What if I am wrong? Whenever I have found myself concerned or doubtful about what to do in any situation, I remind myself to pause and ask a question. What is this telling me about what I want? How will I feel when I have this thing that I say I want? Why do I want it? What is the feeling I am wanting to experience? Until I can answer this question with certainty, I know that I am not ready to choose. So I choose to put off choosing. This is not an action of default. It is a deliberate and important act. To go through life impulsively acting without deliberateness is to be like the footballer who kicks a ball without looking to see to whom he is passing it, or who becomes disoriented and kicks the ball into his own goal. Mm -hmm. To do so is to live by chance rather than by choice. To act deliberately does not mean that one has to make an extended period to, to deliberate. When one understands that there is a law which will give us what we believe about our choices, then we need not hesitate to let it go to that law. This is just a reminder that we were meant to be masters of our lives, to create our own experiences on this earth plane. To benefit from our freedom, we have to let go of some of the outdated beliefs and prejudices that bind us to that which we would be free of. And there's a story, I promise you, that's the last story. There's a story about a man who lived on the side of a lake. One day, thinking that he had had enough of his neighbors, he conspired to go to live on the other side of a very large lake, as far away from them as possible. He was tired of their ugly ways, he said, and wanted a change. Not wanting to have them see him leave, however, he waited until it was dark, packed his few belongings into a boat, and set out by dark. He couldn't get away fast enough, so he rode and rode all night, stopping to rest when tired. Eventually, it was daybreak, and he could see clearly. He had not moved one inch from where he started. Looking back, he realized that he had forgotten to release a rope, which he had tethered the boat to his moorings. Oh my, doesn't that remind us so much of some things that we do? The moral of the story, all our decisions for, for change must be enlightened ones, never in the dark, always divinely guided, and never in an attempt to run away from anything. Also, choose to experience another side of life. Yes, another side of life, rather than escaping what we have. And we must look back only to be assured that we are not carrying any emotional baggage, or we will be making great effort, and yet nothing will change. No effort can free us except the effort involved in changing our thinking. We must begin where we are, to take action, to dismantle some of the beliefs, mental habits, which may be entombing these attributes. If there is the slightest chance that we may have been harboring any resentment, fear, or any mistaken belief about ourselves, anyone or any situation, it is so liberating to admit it to ourselves and begin to dissolve these feelings, lest they keep us from our good. The Master Jesus gave us this advice. Therefore, I say unto thee, Whatsoever things ye desire, 
When ye pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. The ability to choose our thinking is sacred gift. It is integral to our nature as divine beings. We must believe this. Belief is freedom. So I say, choose, allow God, believe. Choose, allow, believe. Take the cab. Letting go to God is the pathway to joy. When you think of joy, think just Open yourself to God. J O Y. Just open yourself to God. Finally, friends, Dr. Holmes again. You are more than you appear to be. Life is greater than you have ever known it. The best is yet to come. And I ask you to affirm my life is greater than I have ever known. The best is yet to come. Let me start again. My life is greater than I have ever known. The best is yet to come. Namaste. Mm -hmm.